Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and there has been a Brad Garlinghouse sighting in Davos. <clears throat> this guy, Mihu Patel, who must be someone, let's see, founder of LX, it, I don't even know what this is. I'm going to go look while I'm talking to you. Um, he's the founder of whatever this is. We'll look at it in one second. But anyway, he tweeted out, with Brad Garlinghouse, CEO of Ripple, and he's got a picture of himself and Brad Garlinghouse here. Let's see if his website comes up. Doesn't look like it wants to come up. So we'll just have to check back later. But anyway, he spotted, he was, uh, uh, took a picture with Brad Garlinghouse in Davos. Now, that made me think <clears throat> I wanted to, anybody who's major in cryptocurrency that I have seen tweets from or that's in Davos, I wanted to make my audience aware of it because it relates to, it might even relate to any any potential investments, things you might take serious as far as investing in digital assets. And so I, the, the only ones so far that I have seen, I wanted to make you aware of. <clears throat> so we're going to start here. Um, we talked about Jeremy Allaire. For those of you that don't know, Jeremy Allaire is the CEO of Circle, which is funded partially by um, Goldman Sachs. And Circle also owns Polonix, which now operates out of Malta, I believe is my understanding. But these guys are big players in the game. And so this guy, Circle, the company Circle, which also has, uh, my understanding is that they also have an over-the-counter trading wing of Circle. Um, these guys are a big deal. So keep your eye on that. Also, you should know, Charles Hoskinson, the creator of Cardano, ADA which I've told you many times I, I like. Now, I don't own it right now, but it, but I wouldn't have anything against owning it. I mean, it's so it's I think it's going to be an important uh, smart contract platform in this digital asset space. Well, Charles Hoskinson is in Davos. You need to know about that. OK, and I wanted it before I. <laughs> I saw this and I thought, many of you, there are so many, poor Justin's son has so many people that don't like him, but this was something I thought that needed to be at least covered. Justin's son tweet, tweeted this out, um, and for those of you that don't know, he's the founder of Tron. He also used to work at Ripple, and I talked a week or two ago about how I think he might be helping Ripple with their connections, uh, making their way through China. I'm, I don't have proof of that, but I think he is. By the way, there's a blower that just cranked up outside my window, not right outside my window, but at the next house over. So if you hear the blower, I'm just going to power through it, okay? But anyway, uh, Justin Sun said, it was an honor meeting the legendary Waz, Steve Wozniak, um, co-founder co of Apple, looking forward to our partnership. And then Steve Wozniak said, lunch with Justin Sun for free. He paid for lunch with Warren Buffett. <laughs> So anyway, Steve Wozniak, who was the co-founder of Apple, is doing some kind of partnership with Justin Sun. Now, I, I, I did this kind of as a spoof, but I, at the same time, I'm serious. Um, the, we've all seen that at the World Economic Forum in Davos, that all they're taught, I mean, a, a majority of what they're talking about is climate change. And they call it the World Economic Forum. And so I said this. At the World Economic Forum, climate change seems to be the theme where it relates to the economies of the, wo the world. They need to be talking about how the climate will be harmed when it's time to burn and dispose of the worthless fiat the central banks of the world have been printing and have printed into oblivion. So I'm joking, but at the same time, I'm not joking because this is a picture that actually happened in Venezuela when they destroyed the value of their currency. So this might actually be a climate crisis that needs to be addressed down the road. <laughs> so, all right. And then there's this from Peter Voss at Peter Voss 6 sent me this. This is just a continuation of the craziness that we've been seeing since, I believe, September from the Wall Street Journal. Fed adds just over $90 billion in temporary money to markets. Intervention comes as overnight repo totaling $58.6 billion 
and 14-day repo totaling $32.2 billion. Meanwhile, they're going on television, Trump and all of them, they're talking about how strong the U.S. economy is. If the U.S., write it down, if the U.S. economy was so strong, they would not be having to do this, folks. Would not. Okay, wanted to let you know, I haven't talked about Sologenic. Remember, Sologenic is a platform, tokenization of assets. It's a project by Coinfield, which they started Sologenic. And these guys are tokenizing assets like stocks and things, and they're using the XRP ledger to do it. So they're having a um, their, their public sale. The dates are out to celebrate this. We're giving away guaranteed prize of $1,000 in solo to one lucky winner. To win, follow this, retweet this post, tag three friends, giveaway ends January. So I just wanted to make you aware of what they're doing. I don't own any solo tokens. Um, I'm not going to be participating in this because the U.S. Citizen, citizens can't. But if I was in Canada, now they're not just Canada, I don't believe. I believe that this is good around the world in different parts. You're going to have to check to see if you're eligible. <clears throat> but in the U.S., you're not. Okay. Uh, Michael at VAL5 Links sent me this. Goldman Sachs and BlackRock reportedly seeking majority stakes in China's biggest banks backing blockchain technology. American investment management firms, Goldman Sachs and BlackRock, they're in talks with the Chinese asset management joint ventures. According to sources who spoke to Cakeson, um, the ventures are reportedly collaborations with major Chinese banks that are pouring billions into new blockchain projects. According to the report, Goldman Sachs is seeking a 51% stake in a wealth management joint venture with Industrial and Com Commercial Bank of China, the largest bank in the world with $4 trillion in assets under management. Um, so anyway, that that's ju I just wanted to show you this to show you these guys are well aware of what's about to happen with blockchain and they're going to put their money where their mouth is. Like we always say on here, Follow the money. Don't listen to what they say. Listen to what they do with their dollars. <clears throat> Michelle Vandenberg sent me this. Now, we've, I've shown you this two times. I'm going to show it to you a third because I think it's so significant. This was Kim.com, who is one of the leaders of the, I guess you would say, the anarchy type movement around Bitcoin. He's always been there. He is literally schooling, and I do mean schooling, Tone Vays. To the point where Tone Vase looks down to, at the table like he's so ashamed that, that he's being talked to like this. Um, but Matty Greenspan, um, and he, he, he basically he's saying just this. Matty Greenspan tweeted this out. And he says, much as I hate to admit it, Kim.com has a point. If we really want to talk about mass adoption, users will be naturally drawn to the network with the fastest transactions and lowest fees. Now, I wonder what that network was. And here's what I say to all of these guys is what he says. Focus XRP says, are you serious, people? You just think about it now. We were saying this for the last four years in a row. I've been saying this since 2013. And these guys who are this guy right here has the brain power of 100 men. And they're just now getting this. It's living proof, folks. No matter how genius that you are, there are different forms of genius. Common sense is a form of genius that maybe some of these guys are lacking because this has been as obvious as the nose on my face to me since 2013. These guys, I'm shocked. Maybe they're just now just admitting it. But he basically tells tells Tone Vez, he says, listen, all of the people, this, this movement right now is less than 1% of the population. All the people that are coming, they don't know anything about a Bitcoin versus XRP war. All they're going to look at is what makes sense. And what makes sense is XRP, the greatest digital asset ever created, period. They're just, for whatever reason, they're just now saying it, just like John McAfee just said it a couple of weeks ago. Remember that? All right, XRP Crypto Wolf, Singapore's government, the International Chamber of Commerce, and 16 other companies, including MasterCard, Standard Chartered, DBS Bank, and Mitsubishi, uh, Mitsubishi Corporate formed an alliance to speed up adoption of digital tech in trade commerce and digitize international trade. <clears throat> so that's uh, XRP Crypto Wolf's been a tad bit quiet this week, but I'm sure he's going to be ramping it up. 
Sergeant Obi Wan sent me this. Um, this is from uh, Trade Talks. This was from yesterday. Nasdaq Trade Talks it, trading anything to anything. Why crypto should be converted to USD instantly? This is Uphold that came out with um, some sort of an announcement yesterday. I haven't. I watched part of this and I didn't. To be honest, I, I didn't quite understand exactly what it is they were saying that's any different than what Coinbase is already doing, where you can trade one digital asset to the next. But it, you can go and watch what he says here. <clears throat> I'm not going to play that video. It's about five minutes long. Now, this is Free American Spirit. And by the way, he is um, the official Free American Spirit and XRP grandpa of the Digital Asset Investor channel. And he sent me this for two things. Hey, Crypto Twitter, we've added uh, futures from Binance to get started. Enter Binance futures in the symbol. So they've got all the futures listed from Binance on TradingView now. And he also sent me this. Let me do a refresh here. This is an article. Former CFTC chair releases his first formal remarks about his digital dollar project at Davos. Um, I just wanted to mention this really, um, this first quote. We seek to encourage the next major innovation in the, U in the U.S. currency, a tokenized fiat currency issued by the Federal Reserve System. The ultimate walled garden, folks said Giancarlo, a new digital form of the dollar that alongside traditional fiat coins, banknotes, and reserves would enjoy the full faith and credit of the U.S. government as a cent as central bank money. There you go, folks. You're going to have a digital U.S. dollar. And guess what? One of the things that's going to bridge that's going to be XRP, the greatest digital asset ever created. Write it down. Okay. Wanted to show you this from Crypto Bird. This is great. Let me tell you a story. He's telling you the story about how they called Bitcoin a Ponzi scheme in each one of these things. This is Bitcoin sub $1 Ponzi scheme. Bitcoin sub $10 Ponzi scheme. Bitcoin sub $150 sub $190 sub $350 $500 $1,000 $1,200 $3,000 dollars are you noticing a pattern? And here it reached $20,000. But are you noticing a pattern here, folks? And if you look at XRP, you would see a similar pattern. But it actually has a use case on top of it. Then Donald Trump tweets this out. Excellent. And he's tweeting this out from Emmanuel Macron. Great discussion with Donald Trump on digital tax. We will work together on a good agreement to avoid tariff escalation. Now, Let's talk about tax. My father, the official father of the Digital Asset Investor Channel, made me aware of this, and it's something I missed the other day. From January the 16th, bill to exempt small crypto transactions from taxes, taxes returns to U.S. Congress. The one thing I've said a lot on this channel is that the current treatment of taxes with regard to digital assets is all wrong. They're treating every transaction. If you sell Bitcoin into XRP and all, or into anything, any other digital asset, they're treating each one of those as a tax um, event. Now, what the, and, and that's a mistake. What they need to do is treat it you, when you leave fiat and then you come, like, let's say you take $5,000 in U.S. dollars and you send it and you buy Bitcoin with it. And then you buy from Bitcoin to XRP or to Cardano or whatever. And then it eventually comes back into your bank account, bank account, and instead of five thousand, it's seven thousand dollars. What they need to do is tax that two thousand dollar gain at that point, and not try to get into all that transaction stuff. I believe the IRS will eventually move away from it if they're not already. But for right now, that is every little transaction that is going to be a nightmare to keep up with. But it, but right now, that's the way it is. What this article is about is there's a bill going th through uh, Congress right now called the Virtual Currency Tax Fairness Act of 2020. The bill would establish an exemption for virtual currency expenditures that qualify as personal transactions. The newly, here's where it tells you what it would do. The newly reintroduced bill would exempt taxpayers from reporting duty as long as the gains involved are under $200 which would generally only apply with major purchases or wild bull markets. So what they're saying basically is um, if you, that way you could load $200 worth of XRP on a, on a, a debit card and go and spend it. They're wanting to encourage the spending of digital assets is the way I read this. 
And then those little transactions would not be taxable events. They're going to have to do something like this. Now, here's what I want to say to all of you in the meantime. I found something really cool for you, and I added it into the description of all of my videos. Um, you're, if you're like me, if, sorry, that's my Apple phone acting funny again. Apple, I mean, Apple Watch. But if, if you're like me, you have a, uh, when you go into Coinbase and all these different things, it's a, it's a nightmare to keep up with it all. So there is a company that can help with that. I want you to watch this video. This is a company called Token Tax. Now, I, I have added a description. This ought to blow you away. I've added a description, a, a link to this company's website. This is a company that helps you with your crypto taxes. Watch this video. It's amazing. Token Tax is the world's best way to quickly and easily file your cryptocurrency taxes. Token Tax works with every crypto exchange. It comes through your crypto data and generates all the forms you'll need to correctly and confidently file your taxes. Oh, and did we mention it works in every country? Getting started with Token Tax is easy and fast. Here's how it works. First, sign up for an account and complete your tax profile. Next, add your crypto data using either a CSV upload or by connecting to your crypto exchange. Choose your preferred accounting method and download your tax forms. And that's it, you're done. With token tax, you can sit back and relax knowing your crypto taxes are being done right. So get started today. How cool is that? Um, I wanted to finish this video. By the way, that's in the description of every video that I do now. You can there's a link take that'll take you straight to Token Tax if you're interested in in uh, looking into that. I wanted to finish this video with this. 97% of the people who quit too soon are employed by 3% of the people who never give up or never gave up. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe. Hit the like button and tell your friends and family that 97% of the people who quit too soon are employed by the 3% who never gave up. Thank you for listening.